to highlight leaders, transforming leaders and resilient pastoral leaders. And that's why we have this legacy award. And the first awardee was Reverend Dr. Hoover Wong and Jeffrey Wong, are you here? Yeah. yeah. His father was the first awardee, and the second awardee was Eleanor Huang. Would you please stand? Yes. And the third awardee was Bishop Roy Sano of United Methodist Church, and he lives in Northern Cal. And Bill, did you leave? He was running off to Little Tokyo. So Bill Watanabe was here. He's the honorary Little Tokyo mayor. Because of his leadership legacy, Little Doka is where it is now. This year's Legacy Awardee is Reverend Keith Park and Young Hee Park. And we give them a word because they're the first Korean American to be the recipient of Isaac Legacy Award and uh, his longevity in ministry. English speaking generations ministry, his innovation and uh, his gender inclusive practice of ministry as a Korean American pastor is so rare. So he's an endangered species and uh, his wife, Young Hee, saved his life. <laughs> yeah, she's an amazing woman. So their team ministry as a husband and wife is so exemplary and I want to just uh, highlight that. But before that, um, because their ministry is global, they're going all over the world, in fact. And there's some kind of an anointment. Their ministry is infectious, contagious. It spreads. Their uh, planted church, satellite church tapestry, they just grew to 400. So there must be some secret here. And uh, first of all, because he's a Fuller Theological Seminary alum, uh, of course, we'll have to have Dr. Rich Mao to really um, give words of encouragement as the President Emeritus. So would you like to come in? Thank you. Well, I'm just delighted. L let me say some really good things about these people. One is that they are fuller people. Uh, <laughs> but you know, much, much more importantly, I, I think this last point that was just made about uh, their vision for the global church uh, and the diversity of the body of Jesus Christ is set forth in that great hymn of Revelation 5, that he was slain by his blood, he ransomed men and women for God from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And he has made us into a kingdom and priests unto our God. And we need the kinds of ministries that, uh, that put that on display. Uh, and we desperately need that as our sense of identity. About uh, five years ago, I went to North Korea with uh, Don Chang. Many of you know uh, Elder Chang, who... Uh, is the owner and founder of uh, Forever 21. And there were uh, four villages in northern northernmost part of North Korea, right across the river from China, where uh, villages had been devastated by landslides and floods. And uh, children were, were dying every day. And uh, Don Chang provided 4,000 tons of food with the agreement that each bag of flour, corn, each drum of oil, have a blue cross on it, not a red cross, but a blue cross. And the words, love your neighbor as yourself. And, uh, and that he go and inspect to make sure that it, it actually went to the children of, of those villages. And some of us were able to go along with him. And it was an amazing experience to go 10 hours north of uh, Pyongyang and uh, see people just, uh, one of the government officials said to us when crying mothers would hand their children as if they wanted us to bless them. And he said, uh, they're crying because you brought them life. And we look forward to the day when we can say in those villages, there is one who has come that you might have life and might have it more abundantly. 
but that Sunday we uh, were in one of the four legal, legally sanctioned services in, in Pyongyang area. Uh, and we knew they were, the, they met, actually met every Sunday because there were Canadian and German diplomats there who told us they went every week. What I want to say is uh, it was a, a Korean choir that sang wearing ropes and we walked in, they were singing nothing but the blood of Jesus. And at a certain point they sang, what a friend we have in Jesus. And I'll never forget a woman in the choir. She said, are we weak and heavy laden, burdened with a load of care? Just stream, tears streaming down her face. And I realized I had family there. <laughs> I got brothers and sisters in Christ. And this doesn't shape any kind of approval for the Korean government, the North Korean government. But every time I hear North Korea mentioned, I say, I've got family there. And that's our identity. And we've got to be preaching that. And for this couple uh, to be demonstrating within the Korean American community here uh, a sense of identity with the global church drawn from every tribe and tongue and nation of the earth. And to do it as a team, male and female, uh, I think it's wonderful that this time, Isaac is, uh, is celebrating uh, a, a team because God created male and female, uh, each of these people fully in his own image. And if all we do is look at humanity through male dominated lenses and we think of leadership primarily in male-dominated ways, we are missing out on something very important about what it means to be created in God's image and called to serve as those male and female created in the image of God. Yeah. And, the, uh, and the ways in which they have uh, emphasized holistic ministries, I think, is so important. Uh, we desperately need that. I was asked recently to write a piece as a Calvinist looking at Wesleyan patterns of leadership. And uh, some of you may know that my favorite theologian is Abraham Kuyper, the great Dutch reformed uh, theologian of the 19th century. He was also the prime minister of the Netherlands. And that great line of his, there is not one square inch of the entire creation about which Jesus Christ does not cry out. This is mine. It belongs to me. And I thought, uh, what, what, what's something like that I can find in, in, in Wesleyan Methodism? And uh, here's John Wesley saying, the world is my parish. He wasn't saying my parish is the world. He was saying the world is my parish. And that means wherever we go, we're on holy ground. Uh, it doesn't matter where we're going. And that every human being we encounter is a human being that we are encountering on holy ground. And that true holiness uh, is holistic. And so I'm so glad in reading about the ministries of your church, the ways in you have, you have emphasized uh, holistic ministry. We need you. And I'm so delighted that Isaac is uh, honoring both of you today for your important leadership in the body of Jesus Christ. Thank you and God bless you. That's together. All right. So, Reverend Keith Park, and Young He Park, please receive our award in honor of Keith Park and Young He Park, partners in innovative, transformative, spirit-filled, worldwide ministry, worldwide mission. Thank you so much, modeling such an amazing leadership. So, shall we present? Please, as you saw in the video clip, their ministry expands to China, Shanghai, Beijing, Vietnam, Jordan, Indonesia. So, may I? Each of you can share five minutes each. <laughs> <laughs> so that we can eat. <laughs> I think we're truly honored, um, and uh, I feel like uh, this recognition isn't just for both of us, but for our whole church. For without the people that God has given us, I don't think this is possible. And every time I look at our church and the people that come and worship and the way they are transformed, I'm just amazed at how God has so blessed us, and uh, I just boggles my mind how God can use people like us 
to do what he really desires to do, which is to really show love, uh, his love, on the people. Um, um, we have a saying from the beginning of our church that, that everyone in our church, every member, is a minister of Christ. And I think um, everyone, literally everyone in our church, have taken that to their hearts. And uh, they, um, they, they don't wait for us to have the answers. And as you know, uh, just because we're leaders doesn't mean that we have all the answers. A lot of times I think we have more questions about what's going on and how to you know, guide people. But God has uh, provided so many people who come along with us uh, to partner with us. It's not just two of us, but people who have really given up a lot, sacrificed to do God's work. And uh, just to watch them sometimes, I feel like I'm learning more about how to be Christ-like and how to really love people than you know, I show in my own life. And um, uh, we have uh, families uh, that have really uh, taken up that call to serve God and to serve other people. And I think that's the only way churches can survive, uh, to be able to, as was told, uh, vertically and also horizontally. And uh, every one of us, uh, we are really um, trying uh, to show that. Um, and I am grateful to, uh, to Isaac uh, for actually uh, giving us an award. I don't know if we can continue uh, um, uh, showing and uh, living that life uh, that God has uh, called us to, uh, because it's a high calling, I think. Um, because we, uh, somebody said, you know, none of us, it's not bad and good people in this world. It's people who are going to heaven and not going to heaven. And I think that really hit me when I heard that. And so our my desire and my uh, calling and also my uh, prayer is that, that I would be able to recognize people who are not uh, in, the, in the family of God, and however uh, they are represented, um, that, that I will have that compassion that God has, that he, just this everlasting compassion that God has for us, I just, it just amazes me every time I think about it. And I want to be able to live that life and show and uh, you know, share with people that God really does uh, love all of us. That was my better half. So uh, from here it's downhill. Um, uh, I remember uh, Dr. Mao's uh, worldview class, and uh, at the first lecture actually I rem remember. And I took away from that class, you can be a Christian and still love the brutal sports of professional boxing. <laughs> and, um, and my takeaway was, you cannot please everybody. So just, <laughs> just do what you uh, like to do. Um, I think my ministry focus is like that. And it, in this worldview paradigms, God and underneath of it, marketplace, academia, and theater, and family, and government, and so on. And somewhere along the way, it has changed. So we replace God with myself, and God has become one of those compartments. And I think that's the problem that we see over and over. And um, I was fortunate enough to travel the world, uh, literally, for the last 25 years. I go out at least about three months out of a year. After my heart attack, I'm going out about two months out of a year. But uh, my mentor took me around the world when, when Soviet Union uh, imploded and when China began to open up. And since then, we've been doing a lot of ministries uh, in those areas. Um, take away from that experience, I still go out, but take away from that experience is the North American suburbia Christianity has become extremely individualistic that everything is, I am the filter of everything that is right and wrong, including God, his word, including church, and whatnot. And I, I take it my uh, goal in ministry to teach community of believers. Because the New Testament is mostly written to plural you. In English language, it doesn't 
uh, differentiate between the singular and plural, but it's mostly plural. And we have made it all singular. That's why we went to problem. How come you don't accept me rather than how do I fit into this community? And, and that's why I notice when I go outside and preach, they want to accommodate to the truth and want to belong. Here, when we come to United States, they want us to convince them and accommodate to their needs and to fit into their schedule. Um, I understand that we are bruised uh, and hurt generation, and, but the selfishness is the one who's, who's destroying us. This worldview has to be shifted and we have to teach them the community of believers. It's not only, uh, as someone pointed out, it's not only vertical, the horizontal relationship together, not individually, but together connecting to God. And I think uh, that's my uh, assignment in life, so to speak. So um, we are a pan-Asian church, we want to be multi-ethnic, we have sprinkles of other races and backgrounds. Uh, but we want to be global church, not just here in North American suburban context, but out there, uh, wh whether it be uh, uh, South America or, or Asia or Southeast Asia or Middle East or wherever. And we found that gospel, the raw spirituality, can connect with anyone in any given uh, situations. It doesn't need all this packaging, so to speak. Amen. Package is not the content. Content has to be communicated without, without apologies, so to speak. And um, so, um, yeah, I, I'm excited to be here. I'm honored, A legacy award, that means I'm done. I don't have to do anything more, so, so I can retire now. So, but uh, thank you very much.